What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki Third Party Transformers review, we're going to take a look at something new. It's a tiny bumblebee. And it is actually from New Age Toys. It's their first thing in their Mini Warrior Legendary Heroes line. And I think realistically what these guys are doing, and I don't... I don't know if there's a direct association with DX9, but I believe they're actually basically coming up with their own version of the DX9 Warren Pocket, because originally it says Legendary Heroes in Your Pocket was the older uh, line for that that series, I should say. And, of course, this is their Espionage Flipper. So, very, very G1 Bumblebee. In fact, he does have not quite a Volkswagen Bug, but more of a... Uh, Penny Racer type body, very nice uh, G1 approximation here, and also very, very similar to the MP version. And uh, yeah, you come over here, it says all the same stuff on that side, and you get car mode, yay. Come over here, Legendary Heroes. Come over here, same thing. Come to the back, and you have a very, very cool picture right there, Legendary Heroes, Mini Warrior, and yeah, that's a picture of DX9 Dutch hanging out there. He fits in the trailer. That's freaking awesome. I love that they built a tiny dio inclu or dio diorama. <laughs> yeah, sorry, a lot of internet speak there. And I like that they included like a tiny spark plug and um, spike. That's crazy. Somebody made that out of like tiny, tiny little figures. And there you go. You've got all the little things there. Ages 15 plus. Hey, right in the middle of that. And box art is by. Whatever that says, it's a tiny little. Uh, that isn't it a a uh, isn't it Bluebird? Like, <laughs> is that isn't that the Bluebird logo for the school buses? Am I crazy? And he got 2018 made in China, of course. Now I left him inside the box because I wanted to show off what he comes in because this is tiny. I mean, if you can't tell, this is this is a very very small box. However, I wanted to open said box in front of you guys so you can see. Look at this. Look at this little dude. And yeah, he comes in robot mode, which is funny because the folded instructions here show you how to get him from car mode. Now, mind you, you can just reverse the instructions, no problem. I do like the G1-esque uh, images there with the grid in the background. That's always fun. And holy crap, full color, well, mostly full color instructions. That's actually pretty awesome. and But I got this guy from TF Source. You can pick him up virtually anywhere. He's at BBTS, uh, Chosen Prime, virtually any online retailer. Go ahead and pop him out of here. You do get his very, very tiny gun. I have lost this four times already and recovered it. Not even joking. <laughs> Yeah, look how tiny this guy is. Super tiny. I mean, uh, let's just see here, just for a quick comparison. Here's Snarf. He's barely taller than Snarf. Snarf is Snarfy Snarf. He's not really that big of a little figure. He's actually, you know, he's, he's tiny. He's not even like a couple inches tall. This is ridiculous. So this is a quote-unquote legend scale version of a G1 Bumblebee. But this is where I was having a discussion with Josh Fisher the other day. Because they're kind of making this in the same vein as the DX9 Warren Pocket series, it's almost like they're basically going for a, a whip whip class, kind of. At least that's the way I look at it. So it's not really a legend scale. It's a Warren Pocket scale. And that's pretty cool. Now, in his robot mode, you get some very tiny reflective painted eyes and a white painted face. Look at your little shmy bumblebee. Yeah. And he's actually in his pale yellow, so that's pretty good. You've got a really nice metallic blue windshield set going on in every direction. You've got what I think has to be black painted hands. And they are just molded in, sadly. And you've got his feetsies right here, which I just just occurred to me that his wheels were not folded away. You've got some silver painted headlights and black painted bumpers. They probably could have gone with a little bit more on the black there. Looks pretty good. You've got a spare tire cover right back there on the back and a little bit of other windshield poking out. He's very, very cool and very, very tiny. Very, very, I mean, like, super tiny. I mean, I, like, this is as virtually as low as my camera can go. 
<laughs> now I will have to get like a tiny Autobot emblem for him. I probably just get a whole sheet from uh, from uh, Repro Labels, something like that. But of course, we need to scale this guy to other things. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm going to leave it in frame the whole time so I know where it is. He's literally as tall as Wally. Wally, this is a tiny bumblebee. <laughs> Good God. That is that is super small. Every time I look at it, I'm like, man, that's a tiny figure. As if I don't know that it's a tiny figure. And then let's actually bring out MP Bumblebee, which I have not messed with for a while. And actually, there's a minor behind-the-scenes vlog of getting everything transformed for this review and the other Transformers reviews that I've been doing lately. But you can really see the comparison between the two. You've got dashes on the legs. You've got the definite feet resemblance. You've got the chest resemblance, even to the point of having the cutoff windshield there. My idea is it is a very G1-esque thing. The pistol is virtually identical. Looks really cool. Now, mind you, this is the uh, kind of orangey-yellow color. After you stare at um, this guy for a while, you kind of have a hard time seeing regular yellows. <laughs> but I uh, forgot how orangey this guy is. But, I mean, it's even to the point of, you know, your back hatch. Now, they should have painted this. I feel like they just missed it, but there should be some metallic blue there. I think my metallic blue Gundam marker might be an almost perfect match, so I'm probably going to paint that just for the heck of it. But, I mean, they, they captured a lot of the same engineering and aspects of the MG in this guy, including even folding the front wheels under there. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it's 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 actually a very, very well done thing. So, But we need to compare him to the other things that he's actually supposed to be paired with. So there is the X9 Dutch that we've already seen from last review. And I think that is a very accurate height size or height scale for G1. Apparently, that's where my light has needed to be this whole time. So, that's actually very, very awesome. And then we can even bring out this Mr. Grimlock here. He doesn't like Prime, so he knocked him over. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good. That's actually very good, in my opinion. And then, just for mainline comparison with a Legends figure, to really throw this off, let's go ahead and throw out Legends Class Sea Spray. So if you went and bought Legends Class uh, Titans Return Bumblebee, he would be about this size. So that's their mini bot size. This is a mini bot. Look how tiny this guy is. You could probably, I almost can guarantee you, you could probably get him in the cab of MP10 Prime. And I don't have an MP10 Prime to show you, so sorry. <laughs> Guys, there's also one tiny little fan mode you could do here, if you really want to. Instead of tucking the wheels up inside the chest, give them some side skirts. I think it looks kind of cool, to be totally honest, and you don't really lose that much articulation. Just off to the side. It looks funny, I, 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 I granted, but I think there's versions of Bumblebee, not G1 specifically, but there's definitely some versions that have very similar uh, aspects to it. So I kind of dig that, to be totally honest. So, if you want to do it that way, by all means. Now, he is articulated, despite how tiny he is. His head is on a tiny ball joint, so he can turn a little bit. Be careful of the itty-bitty horns. You don't want to break those off. You do have a little bit of a butterfly here with the way things transform in the shoulder. You do get ball joint, no problem, so he gets full rotation. The elbow is also on a ball joint, so very, very easy for transformation purposes. Ball jointed hips, he can definitely do the splits. He can even go like so. Mario jump. He gets ball jointed knee and a ball jointed ankle to actually get him into a decent pose. I mean, look at that. I mean, other than the fact he's so tiny, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, for a figure this tiny to have any articulation is impressive. Not to mention, it transforms. So, that's the next step. Let's take the itty bitty gun, which by the way, the reason I've lost the gun so many times is that it's when it's in his hand, it falls right out. I mean, like, it, it might need literally just a hair 
thinner of some plastic or some pledge or something just to give it a little more meat to bite into. So, I mean, if you're storing it, it'll probably be okay. Also, that's pretty awesome. He's like, I'm very happy to be here to kill you. <laughs> Alright, let's get this guy transformed. He's he's fairly easy to transform. He's actually, like I said, very similar to Masterpiece Bumblebee. So I'm going to come up here and just go ahead and tab his feet together and swing the doors, or bottom of the doors open. Go ahead and fold him flat for the most part, and we'll just leave it like that. Come back here to the backpack, just straighten all that out. Straighten out his head, like so. And you want to flip these, you can see the side windows folded back in there. You can just, they, they don't fold cleanly, one is going to be touching the other, so just be careful you don't scratch your paint. Just push on the outside and fold them up like so, real easy. Come up here and untab the chest part from the crotch part. You can see right there, tab, hole. And you just want to do that. And you're going to hit, There's I have yet to figure out what exactly is tabbing on there. And then you want to kind of bring that back. And you'll see you've got the rear wheels right here, hidden away. I like that engineering, to be totally honest. You want to rotate at the hips. Flatten that out about as good as you can get. I'm sorry, hold on. You want to keep the legs straight. This is the part you need to move. Sometimes transforming things on camera is not the easiest. All right, so you want to pass that through the front wheels. Take the arms. Tuck them underneath. Now with the forearms, you can see there's this little gap right there. That's going to go right there underneath that windshield. So flip that under there, like so. And he's just going to be in like a Superman punching motion here. Like so. And the fists are going to go into the cavities right there in the front of the feet. And the hard part is keeping these... You want the legs to stay straight, but you need all of this to fit in there. Now it will, if you bust it open like so, tuck the hands up in there like that and then just sort of finagle everybody flat like so that's probably your best bet go ahead and close the back wheels in come up here and flip out the front wheels and there we go there's your flipper in car mode now guys, there was one thing I kind of forgot as I'm sitting here doing the thing. There is a bit of a fan mode with this, or it was something I came up with. I don't know if it's a real official thing. This guy hasn't been out very long, but I'm sure everybody else who owns it has come up with this as well. And it's what I would definitely call a submarine mode. Just basically fold the front wheels up and under. Just pop the backs off like so. And there you go. Brrr, little submarine mode. I think it's perfect, honestly. It's like, it, it's just a, a thing. It's it's about as good as it gets. I mean, like, there's like the uh, the wheel jack mode that was actually from tracks. I could transform to like a little jet mode. Just very similar to that being this. And one thing I noticed uh, right here at the end, because of the way that this is assembled, the wheels are actually all molded in. They could only airbrush so far. So the actual top of the tire just sort of fades away and disappears. That's funny. They airbrush it very nicely. But yeah, I just wanted to <laughs> include this little bitty fan mode because I think it's worth it. And because this guy is so tiny, I've had to resort to setting the phone on the table. So this, this might get interesting. So he does not actually roll. The wheels are totally fixed and molded into the body. So nothing you can do there, so that sucks, but it does look good. It's got very much old school VW uh, rims. I do dig that, painted silver. And once again, very much like Dutch had this problem with his arms folding away. He has a black part like that. That kind of sucks. But for a G1, definitely inspired version of Bumblebee that's actually the Penny Racer, not just the Volkswagen Beetle, looks amazing. You've got the spare tire back here, and you've got some painted taillights. That's actually pretty good. 
Now what I wish is that you could flip this down. But you see what I'm talking about where the back windshield needs to be painted? Like I said, I think that is almost a perfect match to the blue metallic Gundam marker. So I might hit that with some paint. But one cool thing is you have the gun that we continually lose. You can store it. There's a minor tab or slot right there underneath. And you can just tab that in like so. And I like the fact that the crotch part almost doubles as the engine hanging out underneath. So, yay! This is actually very, very fun and very, very cute. Okay, so for comparison, this is not going to be easy because... Alright, so for comparison, it's not going to be too easy because it's not a lot of room to work here. <laughs> Just because we're down on the desk. Here is it next to the Masterpiece Bumblebee, and you can see, of course, while this is a definitely more accurate old-school 70s bug, and this is a penny racer, you can see the similarities are incredibly obvious. Windows, you even got the VW wheels that are very, very similar. I like that the weapon storage is kind of similar, where this one tucks in, you know, under the front, this one tucks in under the front. Like I said, the wheels fold away the same way. Now, like here, the arms are, you know, taking the place of the engine in the back here, the crotch. And it's still pretty cool that they did that. Um, I guess technically, if you wanted, this is the back bumper, so a little black across here would totally work. I might have to modify this guy just a little bit with some uh, Gundam markers just to make him look a little bit cooler. Go ahead and get that out of the way. And just so you see how small he got, there's Wally. He can fit virtually inside Wally's chest. And of course, there's Snarf. And of course, here he is with Grimlock. And I think it's a fair comparison because I remember when they first created the Dinobots, you had a scene where the Dinobots are kind of raging out, and you've got Bumblebee with Spike trying to run away without getting stomped on. I mean, it's probably a little bit big. One thing you'll see here in a second when compared to Dutch, he's definitely big in car mode, whereas in bot mode, he's definitely uh, very, very accurate. And there he is next to Dutch. And because they definitely advertise the fact that, you know, these go together, you can see here, my camera doesn't know where to focus. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's definitely not accurate truck-wise to car-wise. Uh, I'm assuming that down the line, I think it's Weijang that does the upscale version of the DX9. We'll get a hold of this guy, make him a little bit bigger, uh, basically deluxe-sized. And that will be probably dead on, at least for this. Although in bot mode, once again, these two scale perfectly in bot mode. But of course, because it's part of the gimmick, we need to put Flipper up inside the trailer. Yeah, there's still not a good way to probably open the trailer. And the uh, the ramps are such a pain in the butt, I'm not going to try. But you can, in fact, put Flipper inside. Now, the only reason he's not going in is because I have the gun pegged in right there. But you can see he definitely fits in there. Now, what would be cool is if down the line, of course, we get versions of all the little bots you know, all the little Autobots, I should say. The little Autobots that could fit in there. But mind you, this is a weird scale problem. So to make this make sense, they had to make it that small. This guy would have to be even tinier to truly be a bug. Plus, um, it's one of those things where space doesn't always equate to actual size. So these doors are super thick. These are probably as thick as the doors on... Uh, MP10, same thing with the walls. So you're actually losing a lot of internal space there. But it's still fun that you get the playability with the DX9 figures. That's where I really start to wonder if the company is related, if the, if the same people, or if it's somebody who's just such a fan of this, they decided to make this perfect. But I mean, even the pictures that they have is very much alongside what DX9 did. Same thing with their box art, their labeling, all that kind of stuff is all dead on to DX9. So maybe they're the same company, maybe they're just big fans. Alright guys, for final thoughts, uh, this thing is incredibly fun. 
Uh, it's not cheap. It's about $25 or so for such a tiny figure. But if you're already in it for the DX9 Legendary Scale or Legend Scale figures, you're going to need everything. Now, will DX9 come out with one of their own? Maybe. Or if this is actually theirs and just with a slightly different name on it, I would believe it. Although, I think that the paint is not quite as good. Most of the time, it is. I think that they would have probably gone with some translucence, but that's just me. This bumper needs to be fully painted, and I think that they're a lot better at things like that. So, realistically, I'm probably going to take my Gundam marker to this and just touch it up with some black around there. Fill out the back bumper that isn't even painted, which is pretty easy. I mean, mind you, it's these hinges here, and then this part here, that would totally be the back bumper. And painting in the back window with similar metallic blue paint shouldn't be that hard. If I could match this yellow even remotely, I would definitely paint just this little section, because that it will drive me nuts probably forever. But he's almost never going to stay in this mode. He's probably going to always be in bot mode because he's just that cool most of my dx9 figures are going to stay in bot mode even my optimus he's going to be in bot mode not truck mode the trailer is fantastic the truck mode is not really that great it could definitely be a bit better but the bot mode is nearly perfect same thing with all the other dx9 figures except for the fact that the dino bots are very good in both modes but right now most of my dino bots live in robot mode we got, so that's going to be it for this little bitty third-party flipper review. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And like I said, you can pick this up anywhere. I got it at TF Source. So that's up to you. Same thing with this guy. Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see all my fun, nerdy reviews I do on this channel. If you're over here from the main channel, awesome. Thanks for that. Trying to get this new channel up and off the ground into 1,000 subscribers is going to be a little bit of a thing but i hope that you guys are all in for the long haul because this is what we're going to be doing all the fun nerdy stuff on the show oh but guys if you want to go ahead and hit up the patreon right there on the screen go there and help donate and get things moving forward help this channel actually keep going because every little bit definitely helps and if you don't want to do that but you want to help out anyways go ahead and hit up the Shoki t-shirt store here. There's only a few right here that I will have more coming up in the future, probably a couple for this channel. In fact, and all the links for these things are in the description down below. But that's it, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, as always, to keep on nerding.